Hello and welcome back to this Damnful Idealistic Crusade. This video will be a very short one, but I wanted to go over the couple things I found at the uh, latest local record convention. Uh, it usually happens two or three times a year and the, the venue sort of changes around. But it's always interesting to go and just check out the various vendors. And, you know, some of the same people return every time. But uh, of course, the venue changes. It's also usually a few different vendors that turn up at each different show. And it's just fun to look around and you never know what's going to turn up. Uh, and of course, once the pandemic started to really take effect, that meant, you know, they're for a while there were no record conventions so it's still a bit difficult you know going around and trying to flip through a bunch of bins with your mask on and your glasses fogging up but it's still a fun you know fun thing to do on the weekend get out of the house for a bit and go uh, crate digging so uh there not not a whole lot at this particular convention but uh there were one or two pretty cool pieces that i picked up the first of them i um, unfortunately found three things this time but uh, this is one i've always been meaning to get uh it's one of their harder to find albums on vinyl but i was able to finally pick up the u.s first pressing of the fixes calm animals this is their album from 1988 really beautiful cover artwork still got the original hype sticker which is actually stuck on the the jacket itself um, i've never actually found this on vinyl before uh, of course their most famous album is reach the beach which should be in everybody's collection it's a super common lp beautifully mastered uh, and it's it's a fantastic it's one of the best records of the 80s so um all, all their albums are great. They are a hugely underrated band, known pretty much for their main singles from the Reach the Beach album. But uh, their their first two records, the U.S. version of Shuttered Room and Reach the Beach, are the most common. Um, Reach the Beach is usually in most every record store for a couple bucks. That's why it's one of my all-time recommendations for a bargain bin gem. Uh, not only is it a great record, but it's also mastered perfectly, so it sounds fantastic. They just recently reissued it for a record story to release, but there's no reason to get that uh, because the original you can get for less than five bucks, and it's a must-own. So I've been wanting to check this out. Uh, it's just a standard uh, jacket. The the actual lyric sheet and everything is actually printed as the rear cover. So uh, everything is already there. The insert itself is pretty generic, but still kind of cool. It's the RCA jacket from the time period. Then it's got the really cool red and black RCA label. So that's, that's a really nice touch. I had no idea this album was on this label, so it was an interesting find. Now, this does have uh, Sterling in the dead wax, so it was mastered at Sterling Sound. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't say who actually the engineer was who mastered it. Uh, there's no signature, but Sterling is handwritten. It's also got DMM in the dead wax, which indicates this was a direct metal master, which is pretty common around this time point. It does have a custom dead wax etching, so on side one, it says some people wise, dot, dot, dot. And then on side two, it says some people otherwise, dot, dot, dot. So that's kind of cute. Um, Condition-wise, it's in pretty good shape. Um, it, it's just uh, I've never found this on vinyl before, and I love the band, so I've always meant to get a physical copy of this album. So I finally got it at the record show. Then the other LP I picked up, um, this one actually still sealed, but unfortunately uh, the cover's got uh, quite a bit of damage in the bottom corner. But again, it was still sealed. It was, you know, a nice 12-inch, and I have the 7-inch of this, so I couldn't leave this super cheap copy of U2's Desire. Um, trying to get it to where there's not a whole lot of glare, but it's got the really great uh, anti-corp and photography. Uh, of course, Larry is used on the single cover. And I've got the really awesome gatefold 7-inch of this, so I always wonder what the 12-inch was like. Um, this was still sealed. Um, still got the original Tower Records sticker on it, actually, which is cool. But unfortunately, something happened to this over the years, so it's got a lot of damage on the bottom corner here. So I'm hoping I can eventually get a cleaner cover for this, and I'm hoping that the vinyl is, is perfectly fine, because again, it's still sealed, but uh, I was just curious to hear how this sounded compared to the seven inch, and of course this was from the Rattle and Hum album, which is one of the few U2 albums I still need to get the original vinyl pressing of, and that one is supposed to be a really good pressing and a lot of people swear by the u.s version so i'm just trying to get the u.s version of that um, i've got most uh i've got the rest of the 80s albums and the various uh correct pressings that that sound best at least to me um so it's a mixture uh, you have to get uk album pressings for the first four albums through unforgettable fire uh then joshua tree the u.s master disc dmm is is 
my favorite. Um, but uh, Rattle and Hum, I think you can get either US or UK, but it rarely pops up because it, of course, is a double album. Uh, and usually when it does, it's pretty pricey. So uh, I can get a taste of it here on the Desire 12 inch. And then just because they seem to always find me and I can't go anywhere without stumbling across some laser discs. So one table had, uh, literally, I saw a sign that said laser disc on it, and I just like zeroed in on it. Unfortunately, it was, uh, you know, it was a whole just crate of music LDs. Um, some pretty uncommon, but they were all priced very, very highly. And like, I think I'm the only person here with a working player. So um, there were one or two I, I would have loved to have gotten, but they were very pricey. And then uh, I was at another table um, headed towards, uh, you know, leaving. It was right next to the exit door. And uh, they had, uh, you know, a couple crates of, you know, uh, three for five dollars or three for ten dollars and i'm just flipping through and then as as happens sometimes you find a laser disc mixed in with a bunch of records so i just yeah i just bought this one and i don't even think the guy knew it was a laser disc but i was like oh cool uh so they had the u2 octune baby release so you know, called the videos the cameos and a whole lot of interference from zoo uh, or Zoo TV, I should say. So this is a special custom video release they did around the Octoon Baby and Zoo, uh, T Zoo TV concert tour era, so 92 or so. And it's about an hour and five minutes long, uh, and it comprises a bunch of the music videos, but with some custom pieces, and I think some live footage as well. Um, this, it's not super common, but it, you know it pops up usually for around... 10 to 15 bucks or so when you when you see it on eBay and it's in you know pretty good shape there's a little little creasing uh, you know like some ring wear because it's apparently been kept around with a bunch of records and stuff over the years but it's it's a really cool piece and as a YouTube fan I couldn't just say no and it was you know again super cheap so I was whenever I go to the record con and I've bought a ticket and I can't, I'm not really finding anything I do start looking around for something to justify the ticket cost uh, you know because it's like you don't want to spend five or ten bucks to get in somewhere and you're not finding anything so this was really cool and it's it's again another another time where you just find a random laser disc mixed in with uh, just a bunch of records and this does have PCM audio so I'm going to going to watch through this and enjoy because this album although it was uh, recorded on a variety of sources and some dat tape as well um, it was incredibly well mastered for the era and the original CD still sounds excellent so um, I'm hoping all that carries over it should carry over to the PCM track of this uh, music LD so that's it for this particular record convention trip again it was very short I didn't find a whole lot but at least I did come come away with one or two pieces that made the trip worthwhile and it's still always fun to go even if you don't find anything you know you meet different vendors you meet different people as you're all you know crammed together flipping through records and you see some really amazing pieces that you just can't afford <laughs> and you, you, you do the but i want and then you 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 come back to come back to earth and reality and you go no i i don't have 425 dollars to spare but boy is that pretty uh, let me try not to drool over it but uh, that's just part of the fun of going to the record convention so uh, ultimately if you do have a record convention come to your local area uh, and you've never been to one before definitely check it out it's a whole lot of fun even if you don't buy anything it's just fun to interact with other, with other people and again you see a whole lot of rare stuff that you just can't afford so as always thanks ever so much for watching and happy record hunting